How does Shakespeare present the feelings of Capulet in Act 3, Scene 5? We're actually going to look at quite a long section here. Um, in the exam, you will only get about 20 lines or so. But in that 20 lines, you need to look at A01, um, which is a clear line of argument that answers the question, what actually are Capulet's feelings in the section you have been given? And you will need, obviously, to use the text to support your interpretation. And you need A02, evaluation of the writer's use of language and structure, um, and the effect that this has on the audience. Remember, it is an audience, not a reader. If you want your examiner to think kindly towards you, they don't like you getting the genre wrong. So let's start at the beginning. What is your argument going to be? Well, he's concerned for his child. He considers Paris is a good match. He cannot understand why Juliet should object to marrying. He's head of the household um, and his reaction, his feelings to being contradicted here. And he's a man of his word. He cannot break his promise to Paris. Um, Lady Capulet anticipates the arrival of her husband and see how he'll take it at your hands forewarns the audience that he will not take it well. It forewarns the audience that his feelings will be of anger at her not wishing to marry Paris. As an interesting aside not one that you'd get marks for in this question, she uses your rather than thy to suggest a lack of closeness between Lady Capulet and her daughter as she disowns herself from her daughter's reaction to the news that she is not wanting to marry Paris. When Capula enters, he is in poetic mood. He employs a range of metaphors and makes use of alliteration to describe the intensity of Juliet's grief, punning on sun and sun. The use of this metaphor and his use of the exclamations and questions, um, he, means, he seems to suggest that he regards her grief as immoderate, that she is over the top. He calls her girl, reminding the audience of her youth and provoking our pity, but also reminding us of her status within the hierarchy of the Elizabethan family, contextual point you remember to use them. As a girl in his household, his feelings would be that he would regard her as having to have a duty to obey him. Unlike his wife, um, Capulet uses the informal and familiar thy as appropriate towards his daughter. When he learns of her apparent disobedience, he reverts to you later in this scene. Another interesting side point, not one you're going to get any marks for in this question, is counterfeit. It suggests that she resembles a ship, but it also reminds the audience that she is in pretense, that she is being fraudulent as to the cause of her sorrow. Um, however, you're not going to get any marks in this question. Tempest tossed body um, emphasises the real concern Capilla has for her physical well-being as he worries that the grief she is feeling will her. Our decree, turn the page, our decree is interesting as well. It also implies that he does it imply that he and his wife agree and this is their shared decree or is it that he sees himself as a kingly figure within the home using the royal plural? The word decree implies that it is the latter but suggest both and you will get more marks for recognising ambiguity. Taking one point and looking at it in two different ways is worth more marks. Um, I would the fool were married to her grave, suggests Lady Capulet's feelings towards her daughter. Again, you're not going to get marks for this in this question, but we'll look at it now anyway. She is an idiot who doesn't know when she is well off and I wish she is dead, she is saying. This might seem odd to our modern attitude towards parenting, but what remains universal is the argument between teenagers and parents over boyfriends. Also of interest is to compare this to her reaction on finding Juliet dead when she declares that she will die of grief. Again, no marks for this. Soft Take Me With You tells of us of Capulet's incomprehension at his daughter's reaction. Soft acts as a stage direction, suggesting a calm, quiet, um, making the oncoming of the, uh, the onslaught of abuse all the more shocking through the contrast. The increased use of questions um, suggests his disbelief is very real. With marriages amongst the wealthy being about dynasty, connections and wealth, Capulet cannot understand why she wouldn't want to marry the nice, polite, respectful, well-connected, handsome, rich Paris. He does really love her, remember? He brings flowers to her grave. You could make a superficial comment about the value of daughters with Capulet regarding his daughter as unworthy and the fact that Capulet thinks that she should think herself lucky, blessed, to get Paris. Wrought 
suggests the work Capulet has gone to to arrange such a good match, that this has been um, an effort for him um, and he, his feelings are that she should be grateful. He considers Juliet proud of her parents' care, finding her so good a husband. Her reply using a very formal you suggests her trying to show respect towards her father while rejecting his decision for her to marry Paris. Again, this is a gap, gap it's not about Juliet, however. Um, she does acknowledge and show recognition of his affection and love for her in selecting Paris as a husband. Um, although she hates the idea of marriage to Paris, she is thankful for the love of her father for arranging what would seem were she not already married, such a good match. So in terms of feelings of um, Capulet, she recognises his feelings towards her of love. Um, he does not attempt to reason with her. His immediate reaction is physically to force her to marry Paris. Go with Paris to St. Peter's Church or I will drag thee on a hurdle hither. The use of the word hurdle suggests Capulet regards her as a traitor. Capulet verbally batters his daughter. He calls her names which abuse her appearance, such as Ukraine sickness, um, carrion, you tallow face, and names that reflect her position within the family. He calls her baggage, which indicates that he sees her as his property, but also a cumbersome burden, and hilting and wretch, which indicate that he sees her as worthless. He then threatens her again with estrangement from his society and love. Get to the church on Thursday or never after look me in the face. He also threatens her with violence. My fingers itch, which suggests his feelings are turning to um, physical menace. Capulet shows no discrimination in his anger. He addresses all who are present in the same vein. He also calls the nurse by various names and tells her to go smack her with her gossips somewhere. There we are at the top of the page there. Interesting aside, again, not when you're going to get marks from this question, both adult women try to calm him down. We are told about how women were subservient in Elizabethan England, but although Capulet holds the decision holds the decision as to what happens to them all, both adult women are not afraid to upbraid him for his treatment of his daughter. The nurse urging him, urging that he himself is to blame, he is too hot. <coughs> <coughs> the Lady Capula are rather saying that he is too hot. <coughs> Interestingly, the nurse, nurse's I speak no treason could give some historical insight. Women in the chain of being were lower than men. If a woman, if a man killed his wife, he was guilty of murder. If a woman killed her husband, she was guilty of treason. In saying I speak no treason, the nurse is stating that she is not going against his rule of law, not defying him in the household, but rather just trying to give him advice. Odds bred, Odds bred, God's bread is a mild oath and expresses his exasperation at her defiance. Day, night, work, play, he uses the list to emphasise the ceaseless care as he sees it, as putting into taking care of all her hours, all her activities, taking care of her, all, her, all hours, all activities, alone or with others, he has worked to find her a good husband. This again suggests the historical context in that to be well matched by your parents is the best a girl could hope for. The use of enjambment, um, as well as a very long sentence, suggests his passion, anger, fury, as it also suggests a lack of control and measured response. He is not weighing his words, but speaking with great passion. It is interesting that Capulet recognises um, Paris's sexual attractiveness as well as his social status as important. In, indeed, he spends as long as much time extolling the physical aspects, physical attributes as he does the that if he is from a good family. So he is of um, noble family, a fair demise, but he is also nobly lined, proportioned as one would wish to have a man. He then goes on to mock her. I'll not wed, I cannot love, I am too young, I pray you pardon me. Um, through imitation of her words. Greys suggests that he sees her as an animal. She is one of his stock to be paired as he sees fit. The next two lines and much of the remaining speech is monosyllabic and this again helps to convey his anger towards Juliet as he threatens her with the loss of his protection. Greys where you shall 
Goes where you will, you shall not house with me. Look to it, think on it, I do not jest. And you be mine, I give you to my friend. And you be not. Hang, beg, starve, die in the streets. Historically, daughters physically belong to their fathers. Capulet reminds us of this, but gives her a choice. If she is his, she must accept being given away. If she is not, he will disown her. Like when he calls her a baggage earlier in the scene, she is no more than a piece of property to be kept, given away, or thrown away. Without further response from Juliet, he proceeds to threaten her with the loss of home and protection, with disinheritance, hang, beg, starve, die in the streets, for by my soul I ne'er acknowledge thee, nor what is mine shall ever do you good. In the last line... There we are. In the last line, uh, reinforces his resolve and determination. His primary concern, as in the party scene, is loss of honour, as he will not be forsworn. And here again we're reminded that this is an honour-based society. This scene represents a turning point in the play. The pace of this part of the scene moves the action quickly and sets up the final scenes of the play. Capulet's actions and the extreme nature of his threats are important, as we have to believe Juliet's predicament is dire enough for her to take.